So we've been in Senegal for a while now and I kind of put dolphins and whales aside because there aren't that many here and when they are some they wash up ashore dead and people eat them but recently we went up the Saloom Delta and it's really exciting for many reasons on the first hand because we've never actually sailed up a delta before so that was really cool to do and on the second hand it's an extremely rich um, ecosystem with mangroves which are these trees that grow in saline waters. Celine was able to collect some marine mushrooms which there's so little known of and on the other hand we can also sail up and get closer to inland eco villages which are really interesting for our project. And while sailing up this delta we had a great surprise as we came across really strange dolphins. And so we were like, okay, there's dolphins, but what species is it? Because there aren't that many around here. And after researching, we took some pictures. I did a hydrophone take. Um, we looked up online and came across the Atlantic humpback dolphin. We came across this website um, that said that we could send pictures um, if ever we had some because it participates to the research on them. And so we sent an email and got a response the next day saying um, that this research team was actually starting a research mission that same day and they were about a few kilometers from where we were. We met Gianna Minton who is a cetacean specialist and we asked her a few questions. Do you mind explaining briefly what you guys have been up to this past week and a half? So um, we've been working with the Aquatic uh, African Aquatic Conservation Fund who are hosting the project and um, we've got funding from Laurel Parquet to conduct a three-week survey of the whole Saloom Delta and we're trying to document the distribution of the Atlantic humpback dolphins, Susa Tutsi. So we're trying to cover the whole area with our boat, um, conducting transects through the whole area as evenly as possible so that we can see where there are hotspots particularly and, and how the animals are using the habitat. Um, a second objective is to conduct photo identification. Individual animals are recognizable by the scarring and the marks on their dorsal mm -hmm. fins. So we're using cameras to photograph individuals and, and see if we can build up a catalog of individual animals and um, record their, their locations and their movement over time. I used a hydrophone on my boat to record the vocalizations to study the communication here, Diana's team is deploying passive acoustic monitoring equipment, a sound trap and an F-pod, which will stay in the water for a few months and accumulate a lot of data of clicks and vocalizations that the of the dolphins that will pass through. And this will allow them to use bioacoustics to estimate the population size. Right, so we've got two acoustic devices and they're passive acoustic devices that mm -hmm. we're placing in the water. One is a sound trap and it's more adapted for recording um, whistles and, and the communication sounds that dolphins make. The other is called a, a mini F-pod and it's um, tuned more to be recording the clicks, echolocation clicks and, and feeding buzzes that the animals um, make. And we're going to place them side by side in an area where we've had quite a few sightings and they'll be recording over a number of weeks, and months, and then we'll come back and pull them out and, and see what kind of data we have on them. Okay, so it's the first, kind of the first research on the bioacoustics of the humpback dolphins here. Um, yes, yeah. Yep. The store one. Yeah. Exciting. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. No, thank you. you very good, good to have you here. <laughs> yeah. There are about 3,000 individuals that have been recorded for the species on the West African coast. There are around 100 in the Saloom Delta, and we saw like 10 of them, so that makes this encounter pretty incredible. They are listed as critically endangered on the IUCN Red List. And when we went to talk to local fishermen about this species to see if they knew a bit about them, uh, we realized that it's 
a really complicated issue because they depend on fishing. These coastal communities depend on fishing to feed their, their families and the rest of the community. So dolphins are the top predator of the food chain and it may seem paradoxical, but for there to be more fish, there need to be more dolphin. We talked a bit with kids to see their reaction and they were quite, enth they were quite enthusiastic about it. So we really hope that this may be an entrance to increase their protection and conservation. And we'll definitely see how the research can also help um, protect the species because they're a really incredible species, let's be honest.